Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today we are going to discuss about the growing importance of South China Sea and Southeast as well as South Asia for the US and the rest of the world. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS mains paper. So let's begin with the topics of discussion that we are going to look at. First of all, we will talk about the news. We will discuss the highlights of this news and also the background of it. We will discuss about ASEAN and the South China Sea as well as Indo-Pacific. We will also discuss about significance of this uh, statement whichever has been made by the Secretary of State Antony Blinken. We will also discuss about the challenges with respect to South China Sea, Indo-Pacific region, the way forward. And in the last of the segment, I am going to ask you a mains-based question for answer writing practice. So let's begin with why is it in the news. So recently, the US Secretary of State has made a claim that China has growing influ its influence over the South China Sea as well as over many ASEAN countries in the South China Sea region. This statement has been made over a video conference with the foreign, foreign secretaries of different ASEAN countries, foreign ministers meet. So, if we talk about this statement, this statement is important from the perspective of India and how US is actually acknowledging the growing influence of China not only in the South China Sea, which is the western arm of the Pacific Ocean, but also its influence over different ASEAN countries. And also the US has made a claim and a request as well as an order to all the ASEAN members to contain not only China, but also try to have a balance in the Myanmar region, in the country of Myanmar. And if we talk about the background of it, it's just the, the things that are taking place in Myanmar is a different segment in itself. It is too huge to cover just because we have already covered this, but I'm just going to walk you through the background. After the military coup d'etat, many have been, many democratic leaders have been detained. And what has the US requested all the ASEAN countries to have a peaceful solution to whatever is happening in Myanmar. Already, Myanmar has rejected the five-point formula which was formulated by ASEAN recently and it says that its internal matter is its own internal matter and not the concern of any other country. If we move on, it has also flagged the concerns with respect to China. China has its growing influence on the South China Sea. It has already claimed the whole of South China Sea as a part of its own map, own acclaimed map, the nine dash line map. So this is what we are going to analyze. If we talk about ASEAN, ASEAN is a regional grouping of South Asian and Southeast Asian countries with the motto, one vision, one identity, one community. It was formed in order to have a social and political integrity and of course if we talk about its treaty it's one of its treaty of 1967 you have to tell me in the in the comment segment what is the name of that treaty according to this 1967 treaty it ASEAN has suggested that they are not going to interfere in the internal matters of any country now the coup of coup of Myanmar is an internal matter according to the Myanmar's military, the militia, and it's not accepting that any of these countries can interfere for that matter. So, if we talk about this entire region, it is growing in heft and size not only because of its, its lead in the economic sector, but social and political sector as well. On and talk about our next segment here. We are going to discuss about South China Sea. South China Sea is very important from the perspective of exam I am talking about here. South China Sea is the western arm of the Pacific Ocean and it connects the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. So, of course, it is going to be very important. And there is not only the claim of China. See, as China is claiming all of the South China Sea. It is claiming this region because of the strategic, economic and economic and political 
importance strategic because this area has many choke points what are choke points in order to in order for the trade to take place between two regions there needs to be a region where you can pass for the trade now there are so many choke points that chinese vessels can have multiple vessels over this region and choke this area not let any trade happening through this area that is why china wants to build its power on this region and of course china claims this entire region on the basis of its own acclaimed map the nine dash line map the nine dash line map is expanding itself over hundreds of kilometers starting from the henan region of china covering this region this entire region the all all of the entire region of south china sea south china sea is not only the domain of china but also it is a domain of many other littoral countries like philippines vietnam we also have brunei here we have taiwan so many countries are there which claim this region of course and because of the importance of this region when it comes to not only trade but natural resources fisheries natural oil and gas this region of course holds a very special place for not only china but also many other countries not only the littoral countries but many other countries so if we talk about this region this region has parasol islands fratley islands and scarborough shore the south china sea is connected to the philippines sea by the luzon strait and if we talk about its connection the south china sea's connection with the east china sea it is with the help of taiwan strait okay so so many important straits are here so many important resources are here that is why this region is very important not only for china but many other countries as well and of course it is the connection south china sea connects the entire indo pacific region because one third of the trade is taking place and indo pacific in itself is very important for not only india but also us and many 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 other countries like india's economic partners such as japan australia and also the us and we have south this entire region of uae saudi arabia and what not so this region is very important this is a very recent concept but it has grown in its heft and size because this has become a political theater for strategic political theater for many countries to show and flex their muscles and of course for india it is very important because uh, india has been going on with its deep ocean mission program has been going on to develop the region of its own ports under sagar mala and also india is promoting the blue economy with the help of the ocean mission with the help of sagar mala and it's very important for india to safeguard this entire region and india has already shown that this region is for all open and inclusive as well as free so properly if we talk about indo pacific region asean if we talk about asean has this asean has this outlook towards the indo pacific region being consociation in the sense that it wants to give china the space and hold over this region in order for everybody to develop to have its china should be given according to asean a stake in indo pacific region so that it all these countries of asean could cooperate with china now what does us what does the us say we have already discussed that india wants it free open inclusive and if we talk about the us it wants a rules based order in this region anybody like china who is not following the rules should be thrown out according to the us now india's presence is very important for its economic members economic partners such as australia such as japan and of course india being a huge power now because earlier it was known as the asia pacific region but because of the change of the world here india has like it's being called now indo pacific so when it is being called indo pacific that means india's presence in the global map 
India's presence as well as its domination in the global map has increased. So, of course, India being a huge power, it is demanded by many countries like Australia, Bangladesh and many other countries like Japan, even Taiwan now, that India should have a huge presence over there because it needs to counterbalance China. So, we have already discussed its significance from the perspective of the partners and of course free and open trade is the second important significance for India. The third one being stable trade environment. There should be no such activities of choking of points, no such activities of uh, any piracy or happening over this region, no such activities that are actually in the control of China basically because China wants to flex its muscles every now and then, not only in the territory, uh, territorial region but also in the aqua region, the ocean region. And of course, China is building a huge navy now. And China is actually, it's propounding and progressing with its sea-based doctrine, ocean-based doctrine. Moving on, if we talk about India, India wanted, India wants a unified and stable ASEAN. So that is why India needs to have a presence here in order to be a cooperative and benevolent power. Also, India doesn't want hegemony of any one player like China, of course, even the US. India has already said that this is a free, free, open and inclusive space everyone can benefit from South China Sea. Moving on, if we talk about the challenges, the biggest challenge, China, of course, without any doubt. China has been a threat to the Asia-Pacific countries and is posing threat to Indian interest in the Indian Ocean as well, like its investment in the Hambantota port, like its investment in many other countries like Maldives. It wants to have a debt trap so that these countries, if they are unable to pay their debt, they lease some port to this country, to China, and so that China can have their navies permanently trooped there. So that is the first challenge. Second, ASEAN. Some of the members of the countries of ASEAN have been under the Chinese influence and thus pose a threat to erode ASEAN solidarity with respect to the concept of Indo-Pacific. Now see, this the statement made by Antony Blinken has actually irked China by saying that China said that America or the US, it was this statement was irresponsible on their part and they just want to provoke differences and nothing else. Also, Southeast China, Southeast Asia is at the center of Indo-Pacific and ASEAN is important for India, especially for the country's Act East policy. Despite several differences, although the interest of India and China on some issues such as globalization, climate change do match, but now all of this has gone down the drain because of the territorial as well as oceanic ambitions of China, not only in the, in the region of Leh Ladakh, but also if we talk about the oceanic region, it has of course irked India as well. So, every, every facet where India and China could go grow together, that is not on the table. India can, of course, continue its diplomacy on shared groups such as Shanghai Cooperation Organization and, of course, many other regions, many other regional groupings. All right, let's move on and talk about the way forward. The countries in the region should have an equal access as a right under international laws to the use of common spaces on sea and in the air that would require freedom of navigation, unimpeded commerce and peaceful settlement of disputes in accordance with the international law. It is important to establish connectivity in the region based on respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, consultation, good governance, transparency, viability and sustainability. Maritime domain awareness is necessary for Indo-Pacific security. Multipolarity is also necessary for security and peace and law-abiding for this entire region. Strong naval capabilities, multilateral diplomacy, economic integration with nations is necessary for India to meet the challenges within the Indo-Pacific region. And India also needs to stick to the vision of the Indian Ocean, that is Sagar, security and growth for all in the region. And let's move on to our main based question. The idea of Indo-Pacific as a single strategic space is an outgrowth of China's growing influence in the Indo-Ocean region. Critically analyze. So, that's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.